And with that, we welcome you to the stand share of Senator Canola Leahy and Chris McLaughlin here at courtside. Let's take a quick look at the Kaiser Permanente keys to the match, C-Mac. Well, over South Dakota, they got to bring out the D. They only had 11 digs per set versus Utah. They averaged 18 digs per set last year and were second in the country. And for Hawaii, I think they got to feed the middles. They're hungry. Now the passing is better. They're going to work on this part of their offense to take the pressure off the pins. So two teams coming off of conference championship seasons a year ago, both starting 2017, one and three, and the Coyotes of South Dakota serve first. Bump set goes high and outside to McKenna Granado. That's dug up by Ann Rasmussen, the sophomore libero. Left side set goes to Rachel Schmidt. And a good defensive pickup there by Hawaii. Sky Williams, flat-footed, sends it into the twine. The Hawaiian Tell FCU starting lineups will be scrolling at the bottom of your screen. As South Dakota strikes first. The serve by the setter, Brittany Jessup. You'll see it goes high and away. Granado, the touch shot, and it drops to the floor. We will see a battle of two prominent setters in this match. Marini Osia with a fantastic freshman all-conference campaign last season and two-time Summit League setter of the year, Brittany Jessen on the other side. Jessen on the left, you'll see her attack the ball sometimes. The ball's too tight to the net. She'll go up and rip away. Left side set, that's Rachel Schmidt sends it long. No touch up front, so Hawaii jumps in front. Two serving one. And yes, you heard me correctly, it is the South Dakota Coyotes, not the Coyotes. A common misnomer with regard to the South Dakota program. Two serving one. Middle set, that's Elizabeth Lotion. And she's able to find the floor. 6'1 sophomore from Omaha, Nebraska. Third on the team with 1.92 kills per set. And had five kills on 20 attempts in last night's sweep defeat at the hands of Utah. And last year's freshman of the year in the summer conference. So she can play. She's got game. I love that last swing she took. We'll see it goes middle to Sky Williams. That's dug up by Jessup. So the bump set goes left side. And the swing by Haley Dotseth is scooped up. You'll see a backside to Granada, double block in the air. Got a good piece, Dotseth the second time, high hands and down. Well, we're already seeing the early signs of that scrappy personality that head coach Leanne Williamson says this team embodies. She said she would love to have her team lead the country in digs per set next year after being number two this year. They lost some key players, and so they might not reach that quite high that that uh, that standard. But clearly, they're going to be scrappy on every single play, and they do not like to have the ball hit the ground. Out serve though knocks things up at three. Granado will serve into the net. It goes. Yeah, 25 and seven overall record a season ago. That was a high for this program, certainly in their Division One existence and certainly since joining the Summit League in 2011. Won their first ever conference regular season title. Lost in the conference tourney final though to three-time tournament champ Denver. And so they missed out on the automatic bid and missed out altogether on the NCAA tournament. There is the block that has become a signature for this Rainbow Wahine team through the first four plus matches. Sky Williams and Casey Castillo joining forces. Sky Williams actually got two blocks that time. One of them got covered, the other one went down. She's a force of the net. She's really turning out to be a very pleasant surprise for Robin's team. Hawaii averaging three blocks per set as a squad. Lotion took something off there. You'll see it goes high and away to Castillo. Roll shot sniffed out by Dotson. Dotson will get the swing on the outside block back. Do they go to Dotson again? No, they go back set to Lotion, and she finds the opening. A rare opening between Castillo and Maglia. Those two are usually pretty tight. A couple six three blockers up there form quite the formidable wall. I'm surprised that, uh, that Jessen didn't set away from that wall and go somewhere else. 13 total team blocks last night for Hawaii in its sweep win over Western Carolina to tip things off here in the Hawaiian Airlines Rainbow Wahine Classic. Kels tries to go hard angle, and it just scoots in. So a point for Hawaii. On the other side, we mentioned South Dakota lost to Utah in straight sets to get the tourney started. And in the early match today, Utah pulling off another sweep of Western Carolina. It will be Hawaii and Utah at 4 p.m. on Sunday. A little programming note there for you. Pac-12 and nationally ranked opponents for the Lady Bowes. That one pushed a little too far by Dotson. And Hawaii back in 
front. It's a big chance for Hawaii to uh, play another highly ranked team. We got BYU next week, Utah this week. And then it's pretty much over. They won't see many more RPI builders for the rest of the season. Flamory Anderson to serve. He's become a bit of a defensive force for Hawaii in addition to being a serving specialist. Almost came up with a save there. McKenna couldn't, McKenna Granado that is, couldn't quite pop up the second touch. So we're tied again. We are eking along here in the early goings of this first stanza. Megan Kearns with the put down there. 5'11 senior from Anthon, Iowa. Anderson the first touch on the serve. Slide goes to Mags and she pulls the string. Connection not worked out on the most ever, so I'd like to see those and one that uh, you'll see it. Like you see, you see her chatting there with uh, Maglia right there asking, do I need to set it faster, higher, different location? Emily Maglio averaging 2.44 kills per set coming into this match. That's second on the team behind Granado. Outside said that's Schmidt. Good pick up there by Castillo, and Granado pulls the string herself. So one of the mantras that has been preached since the opening weekend by Robin Amos Santos is, hey, look, you didn't make it all the way to college volleyball to when you get a ripe set, not try to smack it down, but you got to know the situations. And we've seen now in the previous two sequences a couple of times where the dink actually worked well for Hawaii. Exactly. But I still think they ought to err on the side of banging it hard and high. Like that. And live with the consequences. Good diving save there by Castillo. You'll see her. She'll send it across. Deep corner and in. The kill. And she, looks, and she looks, turns around, immediately looks at her coach and gives the coach a big smile. Because I think uh, that was the best part of the play, play actually, was the little celebration. Here it goes in the deep corner. Then she turns around and says, hey, coach, <laughs> look what I did. Look what I did, coach, just like you used to do. Three-time Olympian. Nine serving six. Pass tight to the net. And a good set to the outside by the two-time <laughs> Summit League setter of the year, Brittany Jessen, as she found Rachel Schmidt before the foot down. Schmidt, the team leader, with 3.83 kills per set. That was a close call there. Robin Amo immediately turned to Faith Mile final on the bench said, Faith, should I challenge that? Faith says, no, coach. That one was good. Yeah, Faith along the sideline <laughs> lines herself up with that sideline to really be able to see. She's kind of like the review challenge specialist. She is, she is. I think she's one for one so far. There's Faith, former Kamehameha graduate, two-time state champion. Meanwhile, an ace by Ann Rasmussen tries to attack the freshly inserted Kalei Greeley a second time, but this one it sails wide. So a point for Hawaii, they're up a deuce. Yeah, good to see Faith Maafala getting a little run last night as well. She worked so hard these last couple of years. Here's Gianna Guanasso also making her season debut last night against Western Carolina. Slide goes to Taylor Wilson, it's blocked back. Back row set, block out a piece, but give the kill to Haley Dotson. They can set her from just about anywhere on the floor. Started all 30 matches last year. Yes, it is a good set. Puts it right where, where Dotson likes it. The roll shot, the ball's in the air way too long. One of the back row players really should have had that come off. Here's the serve by Jessen. From her knees, Anderson makes the pass. Outside, Granado, big swing off the block. Coyotes on the attack. They go middle to Taylor Wilson. And we're tied at 10. Taylor Wilson last night only four sets, and she had only one kill, hit negative 250. Looking sharp there, though, on that particular attack. Good pass by Greeley. And Williams unable to touch it down. Little rat attack on the side of the Coyotes. Free ball coming for Hawaii. You'll see it. There it is. Robin Amo Santos had made some comments this week about wanting to see Noreen be a little bit more offensive. We're seeing it a little bit this week. You saw Greeley put it up there right where well, you'll see it could put that down. There's a defensive mistake by South Dakota. They really should have gone up with the you know, She is a third attacker in the front row. How about that? Chester's getting better and better right down the line. Yeah, she's starting to lock it in as this season goes on. Outside, it's Granada, a little off the net, so she took something off of it. Dotsif, flat-footed, sends it across. 
Back bump set by Kahakai. This time Granado takes a swing. That's a save. Bump set left side goes to Schmidt, popped up by Yosia. Kahakai bump sets it again to Granado, and we play on here on this sequence. Right side, it's Lotion blocked, saved and returned. You'll see it outside Granado that time. It will not be returned. And Hawaii wins a long one. Great test for Hawaii's patience. Win a long rally against a team that loves long rallies. That gets the crowd riled up every time. You'll see us. Good serve, but a good pass that time by Schmidt. Right side set goes to Wilson off of one leg. Is able to blast it off the block and down. We're seeing some good things from a timing standpoint on the Coyote side of the net. The plays are much crisper than last night. They just look sharper today. They look better in warm-up. Just like Western Carolina made a pretty lengthy trip over here to the islands. They arrived on Wednesday. Outside, it is Dotson. And that hit the floor right in front of the diving Kalei Greeley. We're tied again at 12. Behind the service line for South Dakota is Mehana Fonseca, 5'6 sophomore from Aurora, Colorado, who has ties to the islands, as you would probably guess with that first name, Mehana. Same name as my granddaughter. Yeah, that's a poetry right there. Yeah, Mehana's grandparents actually taking the team around and sort of showing them some of the Some the non tourist place, yeah. places, I think. 13 serving 12. Granado pulls out the ace. Both teams refusing to call a timeout here in the first 15 points, so they're waiting for that, <clears throat> that extra timeout. 15 media. Fifth ace of the season for Granado. Middle set, and that's Wilson off the block. You'll see it goes middle to Sky Williams. That's dug up by Jessen. Jessen will take a swing from the back row, but into the twine it goes, and Hawaii gets to 15 first. So timeout on the floor. Tight one here in set one. This presentation of Rainbow Wahine Volleyball is sponsored by Bank of Hawaii, Kaiser Permanente, and Island Air. Welcome back, UH fans. Select your exact seat locations when purchasing individual game tickets at hawaiiathletics.com. Click on the tickets button to print your tickets. Avoid the lines by going online. Near ace again for Granado. Chance here for Hawaii off the freebie. Middle set, Williams. Popped up in the air by Rasmussen. Cross court set, and it is a lotion. Plugging it through the block and getting it down. You saw the dig by Ann Rasmussen. 5-4, sophomore in the barrel. Vaulted into action as the starter because of a season-ending injury that came actually in the spring to their incumbent libero, Lauren Madison. She was an all-conference tournament selection last year, but it is not available for the Coyotes here in 2017. Casey Castillo strikes again from the outside pin. Rasmussen now leading them with 47 digs on the year. Did a pretty good job. Had a terrific dig that last one. And she's averaging four digs per set. Meanwhile, the Hawaii libero, Savannah Kahakai, forces a bad pass, and Maglio slam dunks it to the Terraflex. And Hawaii opening up the four-point advantage, largest lead of this opening set. This little tap down, not easy to, to push that down without hitting the cable, and Magla does a nice job of that. Handful of kills, handful of blocks, hit 364 last night, did Maglio against Western Carolina. Oh, Kelsch couldn't handle that overpass. And then Dotson goes off Kelsch and into the pin. She was a little frustrated. She didn't put the first one down. It's actually a pretty easy tap down. And now Raquel West, 5'4 senior from Wimberley, Texas, with the serve. Here's Castillo winding up 
on Coylan. That one off the block. Dots it, the save, and then the swing. But right there is Yosia. So Kahakai bump sets Castillo. Diving layout save in the back row there by Fonseca, and the roll shot is good by Dotson. Once again, this team is scrappy. They don't like to see the ball hit the ground. Coach Williamson says that that's one of their trademark characteristics, and they take pride in it. Backside, here's Kelsch against a solo blocker. Net violation called against Dotson. It was otherwise a smackdown by Kendra Kelch. Good shot, perfect set from Noreen Yosia. Kendra Kelch, what a journey she's been on through her Rainbow Wahine career. Entered the program as a setter. Competed with Taylor Higgins for the starting setter position. Will step out. Dink works for Megan Kearns, but Kendra Kelsch out of necessity filling in for Nikki Taylor when she was injured in spots last year, and then this season has adopted that opposite hitter position, and she has really taken to it. She's been Miss Utility, no question. Just a volleyball player. It's good to have some of those on your roster, right? Yeah. Here's Maglio off the slide, putting a pounding on that set. Maglio came out of the last time of her rotation, walked to the bench, not very happy. She wasn't pleased with the way the, the there wasn't a good enough connection between her and her setter, Yosia. Boy, they surely cleaned it up right there. 19 serving six, here it comes from Casey Castillo. Back row set goes to Dotson, that went off the block, saved by Yosia. So Kahakai comes over, two hand sets to Granado. Blasts it, hard angle and in. And Hawaii up four here as they get to the 20-point plateau. Timeout taken by Leanne Williamson, head coach for South Dakota. Granado leading the way with four kills for Hawaii. Welcome back to tonight's Jack Fact. Tournament success, Hawaii coaches Robin Amo Santos and assistant Angelica Youngquist earned a combined five Hawaiian Airlines Rainbow Wahine Classic all-tournament selections. It was three for Angelica and two for Robin. Robin did get her on one, though, category, which MVP. was she got the MVP of the tournament. Oh, pancake save. Almost for Claire Marie Anderson. What a duo that was. Robin, Amo, and Angelica Youngquist. Oh, pretty epic times. Rachel, all the way. Here's Maglio hitting from the opposite position, rattled around, and it won't be returned to another point for Hawaii. When Robin entered the program at the same time as Angelica, obviously, 1992 was a year of struggles, right? They were unranked for three weeks that season. And so they were kind of in, really in one of the few instances over Dave Shoji's tenure as head coach, they were in a bit of a rebuild. And then they took it back to exquisite heights, as you saw Williams handle the overpass. And you look back at that era and you think about what they accomplished. It was simply amazing. They went on some amazing runs. Their one-loss record was something else. So a timeout taken by the Coyotes. As Hawaii has opened up a five-point advantage here in set number one. We were commenting during the last break, something that we've seen here, maybe going back to the UCLA match. And maybe this is something that is tied to the soul-searching, almost heart-to-heart -heart discussion that went on and now the infamous post-match workout in gym one following the sweet defeat against San Diego. We're seeing some more smiles out there, even in the interplay between the players and the coaches, and specifically head coach Robin Amos Santos, it seems like there's just a little more fun being enjoyed out there. Yeah, I think the, the symbol of that probably was when Yosia went up and hit that ball, yeah. turned yeah. around, and didn't celebrate with her team. She turned right around and gave the hugest smile to Robin Amos Santos, saying, Coach, look at me, let's see what I can do. And that was a good example of how things are loosening up a little bit as far sure. as the relationships go. Let's go inside the numbers presented by Heineken. And the number is plus three. So entering this match, this is, this is pretty interesting. Hawaii Skyler Williams' season block total is 26, compared to the entire South Dakota team, which is 23. 
Hawaii averaging coming into this match 3.0 blocks per set compared to 1.1 for the Coyotes, but that's a pretty striking number right there. And here is Sky Williams prior to that timeout, taking care of business at the net. For somebody who's only played volleyball for four years, it's amazing how she's adapted to the, the speed of Division I volleyball here. Gianna Guinasso will serve. Hawaii up five here in set one. Slide goes to Wilson. And that's worked a number of times here in this opening stanza. Taylor Wilson on that step out. A six foot junior out of Our Lady of Providence High School. Played her first two seasons of college at Stony Brook. Wilson incurs four kills, no errors, and six tries. Pretty good success out of the middles for South Dakota. Yeah, not too shabby. Here's Granado. Blocked back. Second time. Roll shot is dug up by Rasmussen. Outside set. This is Schmidt. Blocked and roofed right on cue. By who else? Sky Williams. There is that ever-present smile. So infectious. The energy that she brings is infectious. Angela, uh, Angelica Jungquist talking about that, saying that she is just one of the delights to have on the team from a coaching standpoint. Oh, a near ace from Yosia just missed the end. Sky Williams still just a baby in the world of volleyball. Four years in high school. Didn't play any other, any other sport before that. Her dad just said her friend, hey, girl, look out for volleyball. She says, okay, Dad. It's worked out pretty well for her. Here's Kels from the outside pin, touched it over. Bumps it left side, Dotsith takes a swing, dug up by Greeley. Hawaii on the attack, right side, it's Granado. Off the block and out. Point Hawaii, we got a little ball here in the first. Castillo rotates back in into the front row for Greeley. That one going off of the grill of Taylor Wilson in the middle on what was McKenna Granado's fifth kill of this opening set. She's hitting 357, looking to finish things from behind the service line. Forces the overpass. And there's going to be a Hawaii point. Back row attacker called on that play at the net against South Dakota. So the Rainbow Wahine make it four straight set wins here in the Hawaiian Airlines Rainbow Wahine Classic. They're up 1-0 on South Dakota as the teams will swap sides. This presentation of Rainbow Wahine Volleyball is sponsored by Strong and Hawaii Honda Dealers. Hawaii hitting 421 in that opening set. Six players in the kill column, led by McKenna Granado. Granado picking up that early ace. She's got kills in all sorts of ways, five kills. And uh, no errors on 14 tries. She's got the tip shot over the middle. And Mango's having a perfect night at the net as well. She's got four kills, no errors. That one on a rocket cross court. There's a block at the net. Good little tap down by Mags. Here's a right side shot that goes OTT. And a right side shot that's a tip shot. So a lot of tricks in the bag for the Rainbow Attackers tonight, especially McKenna and Mags. Series record is sponsored by Aston Hotels and Resorts. Hawaii leading the series 3-0. Last meeting came in September of 2013. Leanne Williamson was an assistant on the staff at that time. Took over the program in 2014. Last season, she was the Summit League Coach of the Year as she led South Dakota to its first conference title in program history. Uh, this was a program that was NCAA Division II until 2009 and then went from the Great West Conference to the Summit League in 2011. So there's been a lot of transition here in the recent history of South Dakota, but they have firmly established themselves as uh, one of the elite programs in that Summit League. Whenever you have the center of the year two years in a row, you probably have a pretty good team. And Brittany Jessen has been just that. And Coach Williamson says, you know what? She should get center of the year again this year. He's got to be the front runner, right? Good dig there by Yosia. Cross court bump set goes to Kelsch off the net and out. Was it touched? It was. 
So Hawaii strikes first here in the second. We saw prior to the match, Kendra Kelsch was really working that hard angle in warm-ups. Busted it out a couple of times already. And she's working on more velocity, too, getting more power in her swing. Speaking of velocity, how about that serve by Yosia? It rattled around, so it's returned free ball style. Middle set to Williams, not quite high enough. Outside now to Schmidt, and she goes off the block and out. Williams can touch unofficially 10 feet, so you made a comment last night during the match that maybe Yosia can get it up there a little bit more for her middle hitter. I don't think she should ever underset her, for sure. Oh, an ace. Pulled out of the deck by the setter, Brittany Jessen, from Mendota Heights, Minnesota. This is a team that does not record a ton of aces. Just seven on the season coming into this match. In fact, Noreen Yosia had more season aces than the entire South Dakota team coming into this match. Good bump set cross court, but Schmidt hits it into the pin. Granado was about, not about to get tooled twice in a row, so she went right up against the antenna, went straight up there. So if she was going to get tooled, it was going to hit the antenna first. Well, two serving two here in the early portion of set two. Granado, line drive, so that one tickled the tape. Once that goes to Schmidt from off the net. Dug up by Kahakai. You'll see it. Swoops in, sets up Castillo, diving save by Rasmussen. Back set goes to Dotson. Good diving save there by Yosia. Granado from the back row. And that had a little velocity on it as well. How about the one arm dig by Yosia to get things started? And then Kilsch, the X setter, putting up a beautiful X setter set. There's the ring with a one handed dig. Kelsch with a beautiful set. And Granado ever so ready. Three serving two. Yosia has really developed into. Quite the defensive setter. That one goes long, but she had 13 digs last night. Yet another double double performance for her. And already tonight, you'll see her with 10 assists, five digs. Oh, and let's not forget about the two kills. Yeah, she continues to put up gaudy numbers, especially digging. And sometimes she will get more digs than Hawaii's the barrel. Kahakai. Good piece in the pregame show about Noreen's journeys with the U.S. Junior National Team over the summer and talking just how valuable an experience that was. Some of those pictures really showed it. I mean, it looked like she was enjoying being among some of the other elite collegiate players uh, around the country. I think it looked like they were having a good time and they got seven from that tournament, a very elite tournament. And the uh, World Championships, great experience. Christina Susak following up the Taylor Wilson kill with the serve. Williams couldn't get it down, dug up by Jesse. Slapped over by Dotson. Back row set to Granado. And she goes kaboom from the back row. And after struggling with that pipe set the first night, even the first couple of nights, she's gradually worked her way back into getting the timing down and hitting that shot and avoiding the block as well. She was doing a lot of tape shots, even you know, even in the middle of the net, missing it badly. And now she's got that timing wired. No pass tight to the net, so a chance here for Hawaii. Bump said you'll see it at Castillo against the double block, and she bounces it off the terror flex. You know, we saw moments ago a series of smiles and even a little bit of a chuckle coming from McKenna Granado, and that's what we were talking about, right? The team maybe adopting some of the personality of players like Sky Williams out there, even McKenna Granado, who always has that sort of game face scowl as Kelsch goes solo roof on the outside. Even Granado's having fun. They're all having fun now, yes. The Rainbow Roofers <laughs> going to work, and they're up four. Timeout, South Dakota. Welcome back. Let's check out the first Hawaiian Bank top three. We've seen now three service aces in this match. But we look into the Hawaii single match aces from individual players. And remember in 2008, Amber Kaufman, 11 aces. Sarah Mason in 06 with nine. Taylor Higgins, fairly recently in 2014, with eight in one match. That's wild. I don't think Kaufman's will ever be beat. I'm telling you, that was an amazing night. And she did it against one of the best passing teams, arguably, in the country in the University of Washington. They were ranked like second or third in the country. A really good passing team, a really good passing coach in Jim McLaughlin. 
Amber Coffin racks up 11? <laughs> you kidding me? It was, it was unbelievable. She was in the zone that night for sure. Maglio taking care of the overpass that last sequence. Hawaii up five. Outside it's Dotson. And she works it off the block for South Dakota point. Nice tool job by Dotson off Kevin Kelsch's arms. Dotson now with six kills hitting 267. She leads all attackers for South Dakota. A steal. Off the block, saved by Dotsif. The step out goes to Kearns. And she gets it down for her third kill. She's three for three. Middles continue to be effective for South Dakota. They now the six kills and no errors for the two middles. Are you a little surprised by that, considering who's on the other side in that middle position yeah, for Hawaii? Yeah, and Sky, yeah, you'd think they'd be shutting them down. So it goes long from Taylor Wilson, and it's a point for Hawaii. Let's see if they get a good pass here and go back to the middle of Kearns again. Claire Marie Anderson entered this match. 27 digs on the year, one ace, one service error. Here's Kearns again. You called it, c -Mac. Mags is dug up. Right side, it's lotion blocked back. Bump set is tight to the net, little joust there. Above the net it goes again, but it falls on the South Dakota side. And Hawaii up five once more. Pretty good block up front right now, a 6-3 Maglio, 6-3 Castillo. And blocking South Dakota's left side. There's lotion. And touched by Castillo. You'll see on the second touch takes a swing. It's blocked back. Bump set goes to Castillo. That one hits the scoreboard, winds up on the South Dakota side. So it's playable in that instance. But they weren't able to return it, and it's another point for Hawaii. Castillo coming through again. Yeah, had it hit the scoreboard and gone over, it would have been non playable. But look at Castillo, the angle she's starting to hit. She's, she's making some great choices going over the top. Taking advantage of her size. And then an overpass force placed down by Maglio. And right now, the Rainbow Wahine are rolling. They've ripped off four straight. It is 12 serving five. Credit the servers for Hawaiian Air. Really punching the ball well. And Joe's jump floats, and they're forcing a lot of overpasses. Right side, it's Lotion again against the double block. This time, she's able to get it past Castillo and Maglio. Motion over six preps in Nebraska when she was a senior. Josh, Josh, had thoughts of going to the University of Nebraska, a major power, but I wish she was going to be a big fish in Little Pond here. Out serve. That's the fifth service error for South Dakota. Compared to two for Hawaii. So they have hurt themselves on many occasions. In this instance, gives Hawaii a seven-point advantage. How about the hitting numbers? Hawaii swung 49 times and only had one error. 52 swings for South Dakota, and they've got nine errors. Oh, service error there from Casey Castillo. Yeah, just one hitting error so far in this match for the Rainbow Wahine. 449 overall. That's, that's a huge number, by the way. Huge. Like a baseball, you know, it's like a baseball hitting average. Yeah. When was the last time anybody hit 400, over 400? I don't know, but they'd be in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> yeah. Slide goes to Kearns. Did she get the touch? No, she didn't. Sails wide. One for the Rainbow Run. Who know. was the last one to hit over 400? Ted Williams. What was the number? 406. There you go. The <laughs> father's at home going, what are they doing talking baseball? <laughs> he says, that's my job. I was told there'd be no math in this <laughs> particular broadcast. <laughs> bump set outside goes to Rachel Schmidt, dug up by Greeley. Anderson, the diving bump set, and that leads to a nice dig by Rasmussen on the other side. Schmidt dug up again. You'll see a high and away. The Granado, the dink. Pancake save by Schmidt, sent over by Dotsip, and it hits the floor on the Hawaii side of the net. 
Pretty good defense going on out there. Rasmussen with a terrific dig of Granados. A laser. There's the pancake that gets popped up. And Rasmussen serving. Emory Anderson cannot pop hers up. There's another shot of the pancake. We'll see it outside to Granado again. High hands saved by West. And there was the dump attempt by Jessen, and it works. The left-handed setter, Brittany Jessen, something that Hawaii had to be on guard when it came to the attacking potential of Jessen. Timeout, Robin Amos Santos. Welcome back. So far, shock is all around for the Rainbow Wahine volleyball team. Up one set to none. They took the first stanza against South Dakota 25-19. They're up five here in the second. Well, South Dakota, a couple of consecutive points, trying to work their way back into this one. And Hawaii out of system here. Granado roll shot from the back row. Oh, make that Kalei Greeley, excuse me. Kalei Greeley gets her first kill of the year. From the back row, and how about the celebration? She was happy about that one. Check out that smile. She's going, whoops, what happened here? Why did I get this set? Well, look at the celebration. Everybody's so happy for her. They know that she struggled rehabbing that shoulder of hers. Two surgeries. So to see her swing for a kill makes everybody on the team happy. Meanwhile, a touch shot the other way from Rachel Schmidt. Gets the point for South Dakota. Yeah, Kalei Greeley, who had gone through all of the adversity of the shoulder injuries, was cleared during training camp to return to her outside hitter position. And then in a scrimmage, collided with Claire Marie Anderson, sort of tweaked the shoulder again. And so she is kind of back to the drawing board, if you will, in terms of working her way back into the front row. But a good flash there. Speaking of nice flash, Sophia Howling, 6'2 freshman from Los Angeles, checking into the match and gets her first kill of the night. She had her first career kills, two of them, as well as two blocks against Western Carolina last night. She looks the part out there, there's no doubt. She really does. Gets a piece on that swing. Second time by Schmidt. She got a piece again, almost was able to put it down. Dots it from the back row. And Hawaii in transition. Howling. Ah, the set not quite high enough for her to get into her wheelhouse. Dots it from the back row against a triple block. Kahakai the touch. Second touch, Granado, it's return. Good sequence once again. Here's Schmidt off the block and out. Once again, we're seeing a long rally. This time, the long rally won by South Dakota. Big swing by Schmidt. Yeah, and I said, they're from Jessen. Schmidt led the team in kills last night with eight against Utah. It's not quite got going tonight. Schmidt only with, uh, that's only her fourth kill. Just over Alas, another ill-timed service error, though. Sixth for the Coyotes. They are hitting 143 here in this second set compared to 409 for Hawaii. Six-point difference. Dotseth, big swing. Blocked, arrow, Kelsch and Maglio. Jumping side by side there in a timeout taken by South Dakota head coach Leanne Williamson. So the block party continues. Hawaii had 13 total team blocks last night. And they are up to five here in this match, three in this second set. They're just looking, you know, their fundamentals of long minute are just so good. I'm not sure who's doing all the blocking coaching, but I'm pretty sure it's. Uh, must be, Angelica Yunkris must be doing most of it, but uh, it could be Cleo Baxter as well. But I'm telling you, they, uh, you very rarely see net violations, and then you're seeing fewer and fewer end blockers getting their, getting tooled. So it's pretty impressive uh, blocking techniques so far this early in the year. Let's check out how it works, presented by Central Pacific Bank, CMAC. What are we looking at? Well, we're going to take a look at... Uh, we look at uh, Noreen Yosia, who's going to make the, uh, the dig back here. Yosia must be right around here. And we're going to see if she does a one-armed dig. That's very impressive. Right there, pops it up. Then you see Kelsch pop it up. And, and the ever-ready Granado hitting out of the background. That's a very difficult thing to do to have all three players make bang-bang plays like that right there. One, two, and then three. Granada coming out of the back row. A lot of hitters 
are not ready for that play, but Granado is, and she knows that Kelsch is going to give her the set. Goes up and takes a swing, and I don't think South Dakota was ready for a bang like that either, because it was such a broken play with a one-arm dig. They could have easily just sort of, I guess, let their hair down a little bit there and and just uh, let their guard down, I should say. And they weren't ready for Granado's attack for sure. That's how it's done. They're going to play alert volleyball. That's how it's done. And again, an instance of the value that Kendra Kelsch brings being on the floor as a former setter when you'll see a, a great defensive setter in her own right makes the dig. Here's another instance. Outside it goes to Castillo. High hands. Good two hand save by Rasmussen. Dots it. Got the touch. Who else is a good setter that's on the floor? It's Kyle Fire. She's got great hands. There's really three people who can really get their hands to the ball and give some hitter a very hittable ball. And that's invaluable when you are out of system, scramble plays. We've seen it work in Hawaii's favor several times tonight. Maglio in the middle with the blasty blast. That one a little bit on the low side, but the connection is getting better between Yosia and Maglio. We're seeing some confident swings from Maglio here tonight as well. 19 serving 12, Anderson sends it across. Backside goes to Lotion. Is there a touch? No touch. Went wide. Leanne Williamson, looking at her assistants, may consider a challenge here. And I think she's going to go for it. Getting Wayne Lee's attention and handing him the very official laminated green card. <laughs> I think it's a good call. I think there was a touch on the block. Unfortunately, it's hard to, to really uh, pick up the touches on the... I'm not sure we have enough, what do you call it, pixels, frames? <laughs> Whatever it is, it's hard to pick up. But maybe it'll show up here in uh, some of our replays. Both pixels and frames. You, you, you had both. You were right on both fronts there, Seaman. <laughs> Let's see if we can tell. Castillo proposing the block, as well as Maglio, and it really right will there. come down to, yeah, if Maglio got it with that pinky finger, which it kind of does look like from that angle. Yeah, here's our, you saw her finger bend back there. That one didn't show it quite as much. The first one, I think, uh, showed it. Let's see if it shows here. Yeah, right there. Bent her, I think her Deb bent her taped finger back. Lee taking a look. He's the down official. Ernie Ho is up the ladder. Ryan Scudder and Randy Rubinall, the line judges here this evening. Yeah, I mean, it plays with you, right? The longer you look at it, the more you tend to switch opinions. It's really interesting. That last, that last one, I think, showed that it was a touch. That is, in fact, what Wayne Lee Ultimately calls, so the challenge works. Leanne Williamson smiling at her assistants. All the coaches have to get used to the challenge system, right? For the, the TV way, games in these tournaments. By the way, my guess is that the Summit League does not have a whole lot of five camera shoots or six camera shoots to get instant replays like we do, right? You would be correct. <laughs> With all due respect to the Summit League. West to serve. Anderson the pass. You'll see a step out goes to Mags. And she just simply placed it in the center of that Coyotes defense. Magbill now up to eight kills. She leads Hawaii. Ten swings, no errors. She's hitting a gaudy 800. I don't think she's happy with the fact she's hitting under 300 for the year, so it really ticked her off. So now she's going to go out and light it up tonight. Get those numbers back up where she's used to them being. Dotsif blocked back. Popped up in the air by Susak. Dotsif, the roll shot saved by Kahakai. You'll see a middle to Megs. That average continues to climb. Yeah, she hit 400 for the season a year ago. So it is foreign to her to be below 300 as she was at 287 coming into tonight. 287 is not, she doesn't like that. That's not a friendly number for her. 21 serving 13. Castillo slaps it over. Middle set. Burns 
able to get the kill. Castillo couldn't follow up the touch on the block. Brown's having a decent evening here so far. Four kills, just one error, hit 500. But again, it should be pointed out, South Dakota still without a block in this match. That is just not their game. And Magley will take an advantage of it. So, in the pregame show of Game On, you'll see it was interviewed about. So, what are you thinking about when you set your hitter? She says, well, I'm trying to get them hitable balls, number one. And number two, I'm looking for the hot players. And right now, she's found one hot player in Emily Magley. Mags rotates out. Ten kills for her, hitting 833. Kirsten Sibley into the match, as well as Sophia Howland. Comes up goes cross court to Schmidt. Dug up by Anderson, but nobody had the second touch. Greeley and Guinasso looking at each other. And those are the kind of plays that will hurt even with a seven point lead, head coach Robin Amos Santos. So one of the reasons that, that happened though is that uh, you'll see has been really good about getting the get into every ball that's dug. She'll go there and set that next ball. And that time, even though the ball was up in the air a long time, she was stuck at the net and couldn't get away from the from blocking. So here's Ann Rasmussen. Got over 2,000 digs in her four-year varsity high school career at Wisconsin Lutheran High School. You'll see it. Caught him napping. You're right about you'll see it being challenged to be more offensive. She's taking that on and taking it seriously. That's her third kill of the night. She's putting up legit kill numbers here in this match. Now coming from the service line where she can also score. That's an ace. Service ace number 10 on the season for Noreen Yosia. The one thing I'd like to see Noreen Yosia do a little bit better is she's, almost all of her serves are down the line to area five. If she can serve some area ones, like, like some rollers like that, I think the uh, make her much more effective as a jump server. And on Aloha Ball, Wilson hits it into the net. Point Hawaii, and they take set number two, 25-15. So the Rainbow Wahine will head back to the locker room. Up two sets to none, and an opportunity for the second straight night to open up the broom closet. Welcome back. Let's take a look at the McDonald's match statistics. C-Mac. Well, the one thing that's really impressive to me is the one error in 64 attempts by Hawaii. Only one hitting error. That's amazing. Hitting 453. Huge number. South Dakota hitting half that. That's one of the reasons why they're down two sets to none. Five blocks again. Hawaii dominating at the net. Diggs, South Dakota showing they do know how to scrap around. They got third, more digs than Hawaii. And there you see aces to errors about, about even. So we saw a similar scenario last night against Western Carolina. Opportunity at a sweep for Hawaii. What is important from the standpoint of the Rainbow Wahine going into a third set like this? I think Rob, what Robin Amo Santos will do, keep the same lineup and gradually start getting other players in. Last night she got 13 in. I, I suspect that she'll shoot for that same number again tonight. Yeah, she was surprised actually at the end of the match uh, when asked, hey, you got 13 players in? Was that by design? She said, no way, 13. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, she, I think, is understanding of the value yeah. in getting some of the bench players some legitimate game time here as she looks to further develop the depth of this squad. Let me tell you, all 18 players have trained really hard over the last month trying to, to get ready for uh, events like this. In a night like this, when they when they get a chance to sweep 3-0, those benchers are hoping they get their chance. Sophia Howling getting the start here in set number three. Well, he didn't want set one 25-19, set two 25-15. See if they can put the finishing touches here on this match. Brittany Jessen helps the Hawaii cause with the opening service error. Robin Santos, of course, last night breaking through with her first win as head coach and special moment after she did the interview with Scott Robb. She came over to the bench and hugged her daughter, Dream, who was in the house, howling with the block and the roof. 
and that was something that was just really cool, right? I mean, the moment it between really mother and daughter, and, and what was even funny, I mean, Robin has a tremendous sense of humor. Uh, in the post-game press conference, she said, yeah, I don't even know how she got by security talking about her daughter Dream. <laughs> when you're the coach's kid, you can go anywhere you want to in this arena, right? <laughs> Step out goes to Wilson, blocked back. Oh, and Jessen able to catch Hawaii off guard on the dump shot. Jessen, one of several players on this roster to have played in the Northern Lights Volleyball Club in the state of Minnesota. Minnesota, of course, too far from South Dakota, and uh, with Minnesota being really the only Division I presence, the University of Minnesota, that is, uh, it affords programs like South Dakota to heavily recruit in that state. And, uh, so it's not necessarily something by design, according to Leanne Williamson, as far as the relationship with Northern Lights Volleyball Club. But she says, hey, you get one, you get two. They have a decent enough experience. Next thing you know, you got a handful. Castillo has to two-hand it over. Boy, a little out of sync on that transition. And the slide works for Elizabeth Lotion. The slide is there time and time again. That time to work for Lotion, a little one-step takeoff. They're doing a good job of hitting away from Hawaii's middles for the most part. A few extra moments being taken to wipe some perspiration off of the floor. Lotion with her sixth kill on the night, only two errors. Hitting almost 300. Leading the way, Haley Dotsith with eight kills on the night, and Rachel Smith Schmidt with uh, six. We're four points into this third set, and Hawaii hasn't even attempted a kill yet. Uh, Kahakai got two hands on it, but a bump set outside to Kelsch on a broken play. There's your first kill attempt, and there's your first kill. All in one crack. Well, I think the reason you'll see is bump set is underrated. She's pretty good at getting it on the money. Look at that. From 30 feet away, she puts it right where Kelsch likes it. Kelsch gets a pretty good swing at it. Yeah, that's uncanny. Here's Granado serving. With a broken play on the other side. Lotion is dug up by Yosia. So Kelsch comes over, sets up Castillo. That's dug up by Rasmussen. Dotsith is blocked back. Wilson, the touch shot. Right there is Castillo. Here's Granado from the back row. Goes off the shoulder of Rasmussen, and we play on. Is Granado trying to knock down one libero <laughs> after another each night? Let's Here, stop with that. Here's Kels blocked, but it goes through the South Dakota block and down on the coyote side of the net. They were celebrating as though they got the roof, but it actually went down on their side. So an unfortunate turn of events from their vantage point. And it's four serving two in favor of Hawaii. Good to know that it's hard to tell sometimes, even from the player perspective, in those bang, bang block plays, what side of the net it goes down on. So it goes long. From the Hawaii with four service errors on the night compared to seven for the Coyotes. You'll see it from her knees, sets up Castillo. Roll shot dug up by Dotson. Middle set mistimed with Kearns. And that's an easy point for Hawaii. For the third time tonight with uh, the middles have been unsuccessful in getting the ball over the net for South Dakota. So here's Kahakai. Six digs on the night. Sends the serve deep corner. Lotion able to tool the block for the South Dakota Pen. Coyotes not breaking down here in the third. They're still putting up that vintage fight. Well, we're getting great sets from, from Jessen and we're taking some healthy swings at the ball. The problem is they're swinging very often into a very big and very sophisticated point block. Outside Dotson. Tried to go high hands, no touch, and sails long. Good point for Hawaii. 
And so here comes Claire Marie Anderson again to serve. Take another look at this. It was Kalsh on the other side proposing the block. Outside Dotson off the block and out. Point for South Dakota. You mentioned South Dakota elevating itself to among the elite teams in that summer league. And really some good things happening for this athletic program overall. They opened the brand new Sanford Coyote Sports Center, which seats 6,000 just last season. And that's an ace. Well, it's amazing. They're a fairly young Division I program, too. They, 2009 is when they started. So they're all really eight years old as a Division I program. So uh, you know, really, I'm impressed by how far they've come. The school located in Vermilion, South Dakota. Castillo dug up by Rasmussen. Schmidt from the left side. Right there is Granado. You'll see a slide to Mags. But only touch it over. So dots it from the back row, sends it long. Is there a touch? No touch is called, but we may see another challenge here coming from Leanne Williamson. She's one for one. Let's see if she can maintain that perfect average. She's going to challenge the touch with referee Wayne Lee. South Dakota coaches challenging touch off the block. See if we can tell. Again, it's Maglio who is proposing the, the block yeah. from the Hawaii side, but this is a little bit tougher to see. I, don't, I didn't see her finger, any finger bend back. Nothing to give indication that it would be a touch. I, mean, this, I think it went just plain went over the block. Hmm. You'd be the ref at home. Yeah, you don't see no. that, as you like to refer to, that bending back of the finger. And Wayne Lee has made his decision, and it's a point for Hawaii. Ends up being a fairly big decision as Hawaii maintains a one-point advantage here in this third set. And Casey Castillo to serve. Instead of being, it's actually a two-point swing. Instead of being 6-7, seven, it's 7-6. Seven, Outside set, that's Schmidt. Dug up by Anderson, you'll see a back row to Castillo. Dug up back over. You'll see it this time outside the Granado off the block and out. How do you like the steal on that pipe set we've seen in the last couple of nights? I like it a lot because it's given Hawaii, you know, a more diverse, complex offense, more for the defense to have to worry about. And here is Castillo again to serve into the net. You know, you could see behind Castillo in the VIP seating. Mr. Matlin. David Matlin, who is, in peculiar fashion, sitting all by himself. Like there's I think he's a great guy, right? Does anybody want to sit with you? Come on. <laughs> there's nobody else in the section. <laughs> Here's Granado off the block. And no, I think he's actually just kind of taking a quick peek because he is standing in the stairwell over to that area. So, but uh, I'm sure he's going to be very happy with us for pointing out that he is watching the game all by himself. Here's Grimaldo with the serve. Oh, nicely done there by Brittany Jessup. One of three Coyotes to start all 32 matches last year. So certainly one of the supremely experienced players Helps playing a, on this roster. Helps being a lefty there. Gets a little more juice in that ball. Finds a corner. Smart shot. Great serving line. Coyotes hanging around here. Renato from the outside. Dug up. Howling can't get it down. So bump set goes left side to Schmidt. Caught it fat, sends it long, point away. Back to the boy, front row, 
out of the national rankings for just the 11th week since the ABCA poll's inception in 1982, but working on possibly back-to-back -back wins after the own three start, and that'll help you'll see it with the ace. I don't think Rachel Schmidt was ready for that. That ball was served cross-court. Almost all of you'll see his jump serves have gone down the line. I like the fact she's turning it cross-court as well. Serving eight. Step out goes to Wilson, block and roof. Granado and Howling. Once again, the Hawaiian Roofing Company taking over. They're in the building tonight. To be sure, Granado got most of that one. Howling, some good footwork and handwork to get out there. So largest lead of this third set here for Hawaii. You'll see it trying to keep the pressure on. That one sent long. Was there a touch? No touch. Now there's some avoidance attacking going on now. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to get blocked again, so I'll just go high and over. And sensing that, Leanne Williamson signals for Coyotes timeout. How happy was Dave Shoji last night seeing Robin Amos Santos break through and get that first win? He and wife Mary back at the arena here tonight to support the program that he oversaw from its infancy all the way to the unprecedented heights that came all the way in between. He was he was very happy to be sure. And he's got his niece in town too, Malia Shoji. His brother Tom's daughter was the assistant coach at University of Utah. Good rip out of the timeout by Rachel Schmidt. A the split block there, unusual that Howling doesn't get out there. So must have been some good deceptive setting by Jessup. Hits the tape. You'll see it goes middle to Howling. She bounces it off of the Terraflex. Some nice celebration going on by our freshman. Howling with the jumping. And Scotty Williams with that million dollar smile. That was something fierce. Howling that was good, attacking huh? the ball with tenacity. 14 serving nine. Seth goes right side. It's a lotion blocked. And Ruth. Castillo and Howling, another formidable blocking tandem. Hawaii opens up a six point advantage. Attendance numbers through the turnstile 4,264. Here on night two of the Hawaiian Airlines Rainbow Wahine Classic. Dotson, two handed in the air by Granado. Right side, it's Kelsch, double block up. Dotsif will get the set on the outside against a double block on Hawaii's side of the net. And he's able to make it work. Hawaii will wrap things up in this tournament with a Sunday match at 4 p.m. against the Utes of Utah out of the Pac-12. Ranked 22nd in the ABCA poll this week. And Hawaii can't return. What is a delayed ace for Taylor Wilson? Wilson and Max Preps, All-American in high school. Middles and Howling! Oh boy, that's something fierce. Oh, what a pass by Kahakai. She stepped up. Knowing the last serve was short, so she stepped up perfectly past that so that Yosia could deliver a beauty to Howling. 16-11, and it's an ace from Savannah Kahakai. And Hawaii once again creating some significant space here between themselves and the Coyotes. Second touch covered by Kahakai. You'll see it goes middle. Mags gets it down. Still Mags there with Hoham, another curve 11 kill. Hitting all around 785 or something, 786. Unbelievable. 11 kills, 14 swings. Under the error category. Nada. Timeout, South Dakota. 
Time now for the Fujitsu Air Conditioning Cool Play of the match. And we're rewinding it back to Kalei Greeley with her first kill of 2017 from the back row. I'll tell you, all five players on the court so happy when she ran off the court. She was greeted by a very happy bench on the coaching staff as well. Dotsif gets the kill for South Dakota. Yeah, that was a feel-good moment for Kalei Greeley. She has experienced some turbulence in her career for sure. She's basically transitioned to becoming a defensive specialist for the Rainbow Wahi. They serve those lines. If you look at the set distribution, eight different Rainbow Wahine in the kill column here tonight. Noreen Yossi has really done a nice job of uh, delivering the ball to her hitters and, and spreading their wealth around, for sure. Burns on the step out. Fifth kill for her. Set distribution not too shabby on the Coyote side either. That's what you get with two talented setters. Hoping to get the job done in that regard. Just in the set of the year two times in the Summit League. That's impressive. So by Dotsa, you'll see a cross court to Kirsten Sibley. Plugged it through the block, but it'll be returned. But the hit goes wide from Rachel Schmidt. So Hawaii gets to the 20 point mark. They lead by seven. We're going to see McKenna Ross get some run here tonight, coming in in place of McKenna Granato. So the McKenna for McKenna swap at this late stage of the match. Outside, Schmidt blocked. Pancake saved by Rasmussen for not. It's a good attempt, though. Hawaii up eight. So they got him drifting deep. It was decision time back there for Dotson. And Wilson then hits it hard angle wide. So Hawaii closing in here. The largest lead of this third set for the Rainbow Wahine. Start to think about that match Sunday against Utah, which will be for the true tournament championship if Hawaii can finish the deal here. Oh, that falls in on the South Dakota side. Give the kill to McKenna Ross. Are we going to call that a bump kill? It's a PK, baby. It's a PK. Oh, and it's all good, it's all good, right? That could have been our cool play of the night. Dotsit from the back row, blocked in roof. McKenna, Grin McKenna Ross, I should say, next to Emily Maglio. Maglio gets the gist of it. Saying, oh, no, you don't. So they rise here at the stand chair of center. Aloha ball for the match. Outside, Schmidt hits the pin, point Hawaii, and that is your volleyball match. The Rainbow Wahine take it to Kahialua. Aloha. Last night was win one. Tonight represents winning streak number one for Robin Amo Santos. They finished on a six point run there. Very impressive. And the match that they did because South Dakota was, was uh, giving Hawaii fits there for a while. Robin and Mo Santos and a couple of hand claps got their Hawaii girls' attention and they started playing better. Hawaii hits 446 for the match. Finished the job in that third set, hitting 421. Uh, Chris, they committed one hitting error on the night. That's, that's unheard of. And 446 as a hitting percentage is also unheard of. Very impressive. Throw into the mix, 10 total team blocks. And how about 13 players getting in again tonight? Good for team morale. Mission accomplished, Hawaii back-to-back -back wins. They have eschewed the 0-3 start, and now they can start looking forward to the 
Yes, two and three <laughs> to the true tournament championship with Utah on Sunday. Scott Robbs is with Robin Amos Santos. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. Well, Coach, congratulations. That's two in a row. I don't know if you noticed, but the last six sets, you've held the opponent under 20 points, and I thought tonight was a pretty complete effort by your team. I think it was okay. It's getting there. It's getting there. Yesterday, I thought we needed to work more on our hitting. Uh, especially our middles, so our middles got more involved a little bit more, but our blocking needs to get a lot better, especially for tomorrow's game. Well, you know, Kano and them were talking about the fact that it looked like your team was having fun out there, and that's what you want to see. That's, a, that's a, the highest thing I stressed in there. You got to come out and you got to have fun. I want them to play it passion, heart, intensity, and that's what they're aiming for. That's their number one thing, and then work on your skills. Okay, you're not playing tomorrow, so don't come tomorrow. Oh, you're playing Sunday. Go to a football game, have some fun tomorrow night, yeah. and, and then come back on Sunday. You take on another nationally ranked opponent in, in Utah. What do you know about the Utes? I mean, they have two local girls, Adora from Kahuku, uh, Bailey from Iolani. I think it's just going to be a fun game. You know, they got friends on each side, and I'm just looking for a fun game. Congratulations. Thanks. All righty, guys, back over to you. All right, Bank of Hawaii presents the players of the match. Haley Dotson, 11 kills, hit 125, eight digs, one ace. And Emily Maglio, 11 kills for Hawaii to lead the way. Hit 786, a plump hitting percentage for the senior middle. Four blocks and a dig. All right, C-Mac, I'll give you the final word here on what turned into a winning streak here. Back-to-back -back wins for the Rainbow Wahine in this Hawaiian Airlines class. Well, I was impressed, you know, South Dakota, you know, played good defense, they gave Hawaii fits throughout the night. And uh, I think it was good preparation to play, you know, uh, Western Carolina first and then play uh, South Dakota second and then build up to the big one on Sunday, four o'clock against Utah, who is a more than a formidable opponent. It will be one great match, very similar, I think, to the, to the UCLA match of last Sunday. And they have the day off in between. So exactly. it should be two rested teams doing battle for the true tournament title on Sunday. Exactly. It's going to be a good one. I wouldn't want to miss it. If I wasn't here behind the watch doing this TV thing, I'd come down anyway and buy a ticket. It's good. It's going to be good. You want to hear something cool? What's that? So Robin Almo Santos telling me prior to the match that she made a deal with her team. There's been some talk about uh, what she wears, what she puts on as a tire uh, as head coach on the sideline. She says that she made a deal with her players. If they go 3-0 and this weekend, the next match, she will wear high heels and a dress. No. Yes. No. Yes. So the That's stakes are even higher That's on Sunday against Utah. Something to look <laughs> forward to. Uh, but I think they can enjoy uh, certainly these back-to-back uh, -back wins here uh, for the next 48 hours. We will see you then on Sunday. Don't forget about the UH football game tomorrow against Western Carolina on Spectrum Sports Pay-Per-View. We will go on the air with that at 5.15 with Game On. That'll do it for C-Mac and myself. Don't forget about the post-game show. But for Chris McLaughlin, I'm Kanoa Leahy. Until next time, everybody, we wish you aloha from the Stan Sheriff Center.